Hey guys, welcome back to Study Christ. I am Char, and we are going to study Genesis 22. I almost said Abraham. But anyway, we're talking about Abraham, but it's definitely not a book of the Bible. But anyway, y'all, the story that went viral, so to speak, <laughs> from that point in time. Um, anywho, let us pray. Lord God, I truly thank you for your blessings. I give you all honor and glory. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are everything to me. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing me to be a servant to you. Lord, continue to humble us and guide us and lead us so that we may do what is right and what is pleasing in your sight. We ask for an increase in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on this morning as we get through your word. Help us to speak only what is true in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Genesis chapter 22 in the NIV translation. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, or Moriah, Moriah, Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Whew. He waited all these years for his son, and then God said, bring it here to be sacrificed. It's a big deal. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son, Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but there, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So this is what my husband called the foreshadowing of uh, Jesus. Jesus was the Lamb of God, the Son of God. He was his only begotten Son. And he was sacrificed for all of our sins. And here we have Abraham who had the only son. And he was told to sacrifice him um, solely on obedience. And he was about to do it. All right, so where are we? When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now, I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. This was a test of faith and obedience God gave. And he was testing to see, Lord, I keep messing with my light. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, he gave him a son and he was seeing if um, Abraham had enough faith to offer his son up to him. Being that it was his only son. And mind you, Abraham had been waiting for many, many years for the son, the promised son. And God was asking for him back. And it was a test. And he passed the test. It, it just, every time I hear the story and read it, I just think about myself and all the things where God has plainly said, hey, do this, hey, do that. And when it doesn't look easy and doesn't feel good, it's like you just don't want to do it. Or when it doesn't make sense to you. I can imagine it. It did not make sense to Abraham to sacrifice his only son. And imagine the son, the son sitting there like, this is my father. I have to be obedient and allow him to do this. I'm pretty sure this was a long lasting effect on them. Mentally and emotionally. 
Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So God did provide a sacrifice, didn't he? So Abraham called that place the Lord would provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. So obedience is far greater than sacrifice and it is very rewarding. It also includes favor. It's just, it's just overall good. Like why not obey God? If God knows what's best anyway, and then he also blesses obedience, that's a double win. Then Abraham returned to his servant and they set off together for Beersheba and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Sometime later, Abraham was told, Melchiah is also a mother. She has bore sons to your brother Nahor. Uz, the firstborn, Buzz, his brother, Kemuel, the father Aram, Kezin, Hazel, Fildash, Jelifeh, and Bethu, Bethu, Bethu uh, became the father of Rebekah. Melchah bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother Nahor. Nahor. His concubine, whose name was Ruma, also had sons, Teba, Gaba, Tahash, Tahash, and Micah. Did not look up those names um, before reading through it, I must admit. Probably did something wrong. Mm. Probably did something wrong. So you might want to actually listen to those. Because <laughs> I'm looking at them like, hmm, I think I'm wrong. But anyway, um, long time coming because it's been a while. We have not boxed a word. And when I box the words because I want to define it and I want everyone to have the same understanding of what this word means um, and not take for granted that you know. A concubine is the old school word for a mistress. So obviously he was married and he had a woman on the side. But during that time, um, it, it definitely wasn't what you see now, like side pieces and stuff like that. It is definitely not that now. Um, a woman who lives with a man but has lower status than his wife. So you see this in the polygamy or polygamous uh, community. I don't know if you guys were familiar with sister wives, but you know, he was only legally married to one and the others would actually have been considered concubines because he took care of them. He raised the kids with them. Um, he put them in homes. They were all in a community together and he tried to spend time with them, but we saw that went wrong. But he literally was only legally married to one. And that got pretty messy pretty quick. Um, two of them were actually indeed sisters. And that's the interesting thing. But again, things then and things now were not the same. But we also see going into the New Testament that God was telling men, you know, as an example, you know, be married to one wife. And... Again, God knows best, but we do still have people who believe in polygamy. And I wholeheartedly do not believe that that is God's will and plan for us now. Things are completely different. And as time go on and things change, God does do what's best for all. And I believe that wholeheartedly that that is not of God. Um, there's so many New Testament passages on wife and husband, there is absolutely nothing mentioned on concubines or mistresses or anything like, anything like that. If anything, there's a heightened increase on the emphasis on adultery. Like, do not commit adultery. Do not step outside of your marriage. So, but there's the Black Hebrew Israelites who 
use the Old Testament for the freedom to polygamy. And there's other religions that do it as well. But like I said, once you read through this whole Bible and you have a relationship with God, you understand that it's not what he wants for us. Not now. Um, but anyway. So yeah, that's the end of verse 20, of chapter 22. And then we're going to jump into 23 in the next video. So stay tuned for that. And I am enjoying these. Um, a lot of interesting information, um, a lot of uh, perspectives and adjustment in my thinking, a lot of growing and maturing on my part. And I hope you guys are doing the same. I would absolutely love to hear from you all what you felt about this chapter, what stood out to you. Don't be shy. I uh, respond to every comment um, as soon as I can. I am running three YouTube channels, so give me a moment. But um, whatever you say, I do respond back. So. Thank you for studying with me on today. God bless. Take care. Bye.